Hey guys, Middle Jesus here. Now today's video is going to be a little bit different because it's really a companion to the larger game room tour that I did about a year ago. Now I know most people are really interested in the games, the consoles, and the computers, but I get a lot of questions about the little things that you guys see in the background that kind of make my game room my own. And often there's a little story associated with most of these odds and ends that you see in the background. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through some of those. It's going to be pretty cool. Let's take a look. We're gonna go ahead and start with something that a few of you have noticed in the background of my videos and have asked me about, like, what the heck is that thing? Well, of course, it is a SNES Pi that looks like an original NES. And inside of it, it has a Raspberry Pi 3 B Plus computer in there. And I built this to just kind of get myself familiar with Raspberry Pi. So many people, Love Raspberry Pi, it is super cheap to make and surprisingly powerful. And the combination of the B Plus with that housing is pretty cool because the buttons on the front work and that's something that not all of them do. Many of you have noticed and asked me about these posters in the background here and I'll be right up front and honest with you. I don't think these are licensed. I didn't ask when I bought them. I bought them at the Portland Retro Gaming Expo. I just thought they were super cool and some of my favorite games and I needed some artwork for my walls. And here's something I get a lot of questions about because it's sitting behind me in a lot of my videos and it looks just super cool. And that is the Gears of War 3 Xbox 360 case. Now, this is completely licensed and so cool because when you build it all together, it glows, so it actually draws power from the USB port in the back, it has a couple different settings, and it actually will change the glow based on sound cues from the game. So cool, this is a gift from uh, my buddy Drunken Master Paul, he found it at a pawn shop. And for years, one of my goals for collecting was to get the elusive Resident Evil 4 chainsaw controller. Been looking for these for a while because they're super expensive. And finally, uh, my buddy Reggie was looking to get rid of two of his. He actually had the PlayStation 2 version, which you see right here, and also the GameCube, and he sold me this very cheap. When I first started building out my game room, I wanted a shelf where I could highlight some of my more interesting parts of my game collection, which that's what this shelf is right here. But many of you have noticed below that I have these kind of unusual mini 3D printed game consoles and computers. And, I've asked, and you've asked me about this. Well, I actually did a video on it a couple years ago. So my buddy Dave Nunez runs a site called Rabbit Engineering and he creates these. Not only these that you see right here, this is just kind of like the first run of them. He actually has created pretty much every single console and retro style gaming computer that was ever made in the 80s and 90s. And so if you're interested in these, definitely check out his site because I think they're pretty cool. Here's a recent addition to my game room, courtesy of my buddy Drunken Master Paul. He found this at a local GameStop, and of course, as you can see here, it is a Star Wars X-Wing pilot helmet. What's cool about this is that it has an actual working microphone with a battery pack, so you can play Battlefront 2 and pretend to actually have the helmet and be in an X-Wing. So maybe we'll do a Let's Play where we wear this sometime and embarrass ourselves. And speaking of Star Wars, this has been in my game room since the very beginning because I loved this comic as a kid and it's it's just so iconic to me it's one of the very first comic editions of the original star wars movie and so it, it holds a very special place in my heart i've mentioned this story before but it's worth bringing up again because i do get questions about it this mug here is from phantasmagoria 2 which was a sierra game back in the 90s and it came from the sierra employee kitchen and when i left sierra i took a box with me and it had a bunch of random stuff like this. So Phantasmagoria 2 was one of the mugs and a bunch of other ones as well. Speaking of merchandise, the site that I use to create all of my Metal Jesus Rocks t-shirts is called tpublic.com. But one of the cool things that they do is they also take that same artwork and they'll create things like mugs, notebooks, wall art, pillows, 
uh, iPhone cases, laptop cases, stuff like that. So that's what you're seeing right here. Many of you are familiar with John Riggs. Well, on his YouTube channel, he'll take Japanese Famicom games, hack the graphics, and then put them on a cartridge that will work on a North American Nintendo. And so what you're seeing here is a Japanese side-scrolling shooter that he took and then he put my likeness in, changed the title screen, changed the graphics, completely just made it my own and then printed off this card here. So it's definitely a really cool part of my collection. Some of you have asked if I ended up getting the classic mini editions of the Nintendo systems. And yes, as you can see here, I got the Super Nintendo as well as the PAL version of the Nintendo Classic Mini. I thought that was kind of cool. The games are a little bit different. And then sprinkled all around my game room are these random assortment of game-themed mints and candy. So you see, of course, here, the original PlayStation Portable, the PSP, which I thought was cool, as well as some Nintendo-themed ones here. These ones are probably my favorite because obviously they're based on stand-up arcade machines. But again, keep in mind that they're filled with candy. Now, the original thought was I would buy all these and then do a video on them of some kind. This is actually a couple years ago where I thought, you know, maybe we could do a Gamer Eats episode where we play games and we just eat a bunch of this game themed candy. You know, I, I have no idea what these things taste like. I just thought that they were really cool and they definitely appeal to the collector in me. Next up is a pretty cool donation I got from Jeff from a website called BrickGun.com. As you can see here, these are two retro styled game controllers, but they're pretty cool because they're made out of Legos. Now they're designed to be as close to life size as possible, also as detailed as possible. And then check it out. If you look, he's actually trying to hide as many of the Lego studs as possible. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you may have seen a video series called I Hate You. It's a competition where we play really bad games and you don't wanna be the biggest loser because you end up getting one of these I Hate You trophies. And so that's what you see here. These are previous I Hate You trophies signed by the people who were in the episode. Now I used to have almost double this amount of trophies, but I think it was either my 50,000 subscriber or my 100,000 subscriber video. I ended up giving out a lot of these to my longtime subscribers. So. So previous versions of these are now in the game rooms of longtime fans of my channel, which is pretty awesome. You guys know that I love my racing games and that plays right into a childhood obsession of sports cars. I was that kid who had the Lamborghini Countach poster sitting on my wall next to my Rambo poster and my music posters. And uh, so in my game room, I have a couple of these miniatures I really dig the Ferrari. I love the 458 body style. Uh, probably my all time favorite is the Dino. And this is probably the closest I was able to find with the Dino at a reasonable price. Definitely a beautiful car. And it's cool to have some of this scattered around my room. Some of you have asked me about the mini nuke in the background of my videos, and that is the Fallout Anthology that was released on PC a couple years ago. Although this was donated to me at an expo in the middle of one of my panels. And I was blown away because this is now super collectible. And probably my favorite feature of it, well, push this little button here. Yep, how awesome is that? Here's something I've had in my game collection for quite a while now because it was given to me by an ex coworker when I was working back in IT help desk. And as you can see here, it is Lunar Silver Star Story. It's the Galleon Puppet. That is the main antagonist or final boss of the game. Now what's hilarious about this is that it has punching arms. Another thing that's interesting about this is it was released in 2000 as a promo item. Now I don't know exactly where he got this, but I think it might've been GameStop. Another figure I've had in my game room for a long time is this Todd McFarlane Ace Freely figure here based on the Kiss Alive album, and it even includes a Marshall stack. And speaking of Kiss and things that are very important to me, this is an empty bottle of red wine. As you can see here, this is Kiss. I bought this back in the 90s. I think this might've been one of the first official licensed Kiss wines. Very limited edition, but the reason why it's empty 
is because I saved it for the night of my gig, my very first gig in front of an audience. And after that gig, I was on a high and I had to open up this bottle of wine as a celebration with my bandmates. It was definitely a great moment in my life and uh, that's what this is. And so I keep it in my game room. All right, guys, that's a quick look at some of the odds and ends that are in my game room that really kind of make it my own. I love coming down here and all those little touches just make it that much better. But I know I'm not alone. So I would love to know down in the comments if you have a game room or even a space on your shelf, what sort of things do you highlight that kind of make it just that much better? Love to know down in the comments. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and take care. As you may have noticed, many of the things in my game room have been donated by awesome people like you. And I never take that for granted. It's so cool to take something like that, put it in the background and you can see it in my videos. You know, often people will ask me, hey, I'm gonna throw this thing out. Do you want it? Because, you know, I think people would like to see some of this stuff go to a good home. Yes, they could sell it on eBay. Yes, they could donate it to Goodwill, but Sometimes I just want to put it in a game room and see it in the background of my videos. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching and have a great day.